Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV. So I thought I'd do an update video on the Starlink internet dish that uh, I was testing out last year. I was one of the earlier adopters and was in on the beta program. Got my dish in uh, February 2021 and used it for about six months and did quite a few videos of it. Um, six or seven videos of my experience with the, the Starlink. Uh, but then we headed down to the U.S., and at the time, that was November, uh, they they weren't uh, working down there. If you had a Canadian dish, you couldn't take it down to the U.S., so it wasn't worth me buying a U.S. version of the dish and trying to find an address to, to register it down there, so I just ended up using cell service. But now that I'm back in Canada, what I had done is I cancelled my account, but I'm uh, back in Canada now, and I uh, was able to reactivate it very easily. I just put a ticket into support and I still have my online account and within the, I told them what day I wanted it to work and when I got home it was working. Uh, they have changed quite a few things in the six months I was away. One big thing is the dish is now square whereas mine was a round dish. Uh, the square dish I believe is a lot lighter and a little bit smaller than my dish so there's a few differences there it looks like the router is different there's all kinds of videos on it if you want to see the differences but anyway I still have the old round dish uh, they also have um, now what they call portability um, that's basically uh, you can take it away from your service address and, and it will work so I thought oh that's great I, I, I'd like that because you could uh, take it down south and it would work I saw international travel so I got a little bit excited but it says down here that uh, you can only use the portability for two months then you'll be required to move your registered address to your new location or purchase an additional Starlink to maintain service. So I'm just not sure if I'm going to be able to move my registered address to a U.S. address. That'll, I guess that's something I'll have to find out if I go down there again. But there also is a new thing called RV, Starlink for RVs. Um, it's a little more expensive of a plan, but it basically you can take it all over when you're traveling. Uh, the only caveat to that is if there's uh, if there's not good uh, uh, availability of the service, you go into a cell that's, that's uh, full basically, you might uh, get your uh, speed slowed down because of that, because it'll put priority to people that are what they call residential users, and you'll be deprioritized and uh, you won't get as good as the residential people. So. I haven't switched mine over yet. I'm still running the residential because I found since we've been back that I've been able to move my dish around. I think because where I am, I have very good uh, capacity. Like you see here, all these cells, they say available now. This is Vancouver Island, just almost solid blue. So I've been able to move my address so when we switch campsites, um, I think we started at Rath Trevor Beach out yeah, on Vancouver Island here. I've been kind of all over the island. You can see here all these places. And I've just gone into my 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 uh, account and I've just given it a new address. And then it's just basically, it's like I've moved my house and I have a new residential address. So that's been working so far. So I haven't had to switch to the RV version or added portability to my account and it's about thirty dollars more for that stuff so it's not really worth it if this seems to be working for me um, when I re rebooted my account I still was being charged kind of the older rate I'm paying 129 Canadian plus tax um, I think the American one went up from 99 to 110, so they have raised some of their prices. They're just coming out with a lot of kind of plans to tr try to squeeze as much uh, money out of you as they can. But the new RV thing is kind of cool because you can pause it. So if you don't need Starlink at home, you can just, when you're going away for a month or two, you can boot up the, the Starlink, pay for it for those months, and then put it on pause. So how was, how's the thing been performing? It's been performing just as well as before, maybe even a little bit better. We've been to a few campgrounds, and I find it seems to be performing a little better with the trees. Now, if it's really thick trees, like in this uh, 
uh, Trevor Park here. It's the one we stayed in. It's really thickly forested. So when we go down here, we were actually camping right in here. And I would I would get a connection maybe 25% of the time. We'd get just a little bit of sky that we could see. Uh, I find that it really needs a northern sky to be really good. Uh, let's see, this constellation site here, this is satellitemap.space. And you can see this is Vancouver Island here. And there's a lot of satellites going over compared to the southern skies. Kind of an advantage of... Uh, driving around up here you can see I'm connecting to quite a few satellites at one time um, back about a year ago I'd only end up with about three lines sometimes I see seven or eight lines so but you can see how they're all connecting to satellites to the north so I find if I have any type of good northern sky I get really good good connection even in trees so here there wasn't very good here we actually ended up moving there was another section of the park, and you can see how it's uh, got some sky here. So we got a campsite on this side where I could get a little bit of northern sky, and it was pretty decent actually. It, it wouldn't, it didn't suffer as many disconnections, and we could stream, stream video and stuff like that. Um, if you get a, if you get enough uh, time where it's it's connected when you're streaming, it'll it'll buffer ahead and you won't even notice that you're getting disconnections. But if you're doing teleconferencing, like video conferencing, you would notice for sure you'd probably or gaming you would you would have a lot of dropouts. But anyway, that was a, a little bit sketchy there. Then we moved down and I, I spent some time in my sister's driveway in Victoria and I was surprised for such a dense urban area, I was able to move in there no problem. So I guess there's just not as many people that have Starlink there. And I had a pretty good sky, so we had a really good connection there. Then we went out to this uh, French beach, which is another provincial park. Same thing, thickly forested. And I had actually some good cell service, so I didn't even bother using the Starlink. We were camped somewhere here, and you can see it was just ridiculous. You know, if I used it, I could I could get some connections, um, but it wouldn't it would be hard to use. It would be only for kind of getting email and stuff like that. Then, surprising, this Buttle Lake uh, moved to there. We've been went there for two weeks, and you, we were camped right along here. Um, and I was able to take the Starlink dish. Uh, my version comes with a hundred feet of cable, and I just sat it just in front of the trees here. And it was amazing. We were getting great connections and very few disconnects, even though there was a wall of trees behind us to the south. But you can see we had a, a northward view, and I guess that's why. I have a little bit of video footage there. I'll show you that. So we've been camped here at Buttle Lake for about two weeks now, and I just wanted to show you how much trees the Starlink can actually handle. We've had really solid internet, no problems, fast. Basically hardly any disconnections at all, and I'm very close to the tree line. I guess the the big thing is I've got a pretty clear view of the northern sky. And that makes a lot of difference. So we have a big, vast area of sky to the north. But we're really close on this side. Basically a wall of trees sort of to the west and to the southwest. See, that's very close to those trees, but it doesn't really make much difference. I think they've really improved over the last year even. We came out here and had pretty good internet, but it's a lot more solid now. I guess there's just a lot more satellites going overhead to connect to. And finally, we've returned to Thunderbird RV Park here, where I had it before for six months or so. And it's a great spot for the dish because you can see there's no trees above us. So we get an amazing connection. It can go 12 hours or more and not one disconnect. It won't report one disconnect. Uh, one thing I've done here now that we're here for a few months, um, I've been using the little tripod mount that it came with. And last year, actually, actually, you can see our RV here in this satellite. <laughs> anyway, I would put it on the roof, and I used to have an old antenna 
bracket and I would bolt it to that but I since got a new TV antenna and I don't have a really convenient place on the roof to put it um, it can sit on its tripod and take quite a bit of wind but I didn't I didn't feel comfortable that you know a big gust might blow the dish right off and damage it so on the back of the RV I've uh, attached it to a ladder with a pole I got so I have a little bit of video showing that here's my new mounting setup I got a pole and uh, from Starlink, I ordered the pole mount for the dish. You can see up there, there's six bolts that go in and they clamp onto the pole. Then the dish simply fits into there. So I'm using an old uh, flag pole holder that I had and it fit perfectly for this pipe. So this is actually a uh, a pretty a pretty thick gauge uh, powder coated pipe that they use for uh, chain link fencing it fits nicely in there so the thing has a fair amount of weight too I think the pole is eight pounds and the dish is like something around 20 pounds so it sits pretty good wind doesn't bother it at all and I just took the the cable and I just have some gaffer tape down there just to hold the cable in place. So it's worked out pretty good. And then it's easy to take down. Just go like that, pull it out, take the dish off the pole. And the pole is actually seven and a half feet. So it'll fit lengthwise in my storage bay across my eight foot RV. Well, there we go. That's about it for the update on the Starlink. It's back and working well for us, better than ever. Uh, as far as one thing about is power consumption, I know they've upgraded the firmware a bit, and I, I do see a little bit better, but this my dish is a real power pig. It's, it's always drawing somewhere between 70 to 100 watts consistently. So over the course of a day, if you have it on a lot, you're going to eat up a lot of uh, your battery power. I have heard the newer dish is maybe even about half that wattage, the new uh, the newer square dishes. So I can't really comment. I don't have one to compare, but uh, they are working on it and getting it better all the time, and seem to be making them smaller. So hopefully in the future there'll be a, a really nice uh, low power one for uh, people that like to boondock. Till next time, Ray from Love Your RV. Cheers, folks.